Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah. What is the thing that we must be grateful to Allah for? Islam. Right? Alhamdulillah, uh, one of Almi's friends just took shahada yesterday. Right? In the Kilburn Mosque. And we make dua that Allah will guide him to the right path. Brother CJ, he's still here, alhamdulillah. Still a Muslim, yeah? <laughs> CJ? Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> right? Took each other two, two months ago, right? Um, brother Yusuf, right? Just finished medical school. He's going to medical school soon, inshallah. Make dua for him. All right, so stick next to each other. Uh, don't forget us when you are sick. <laughs> okay, so so this is important, right? That we we continue, yeah, to to be grateful to Allah. Isn't it true? Yeah, for having guiding all of us to Islam. It's, it's very important, right? As, as you said just now, right? Some of the, your friends are not practicing, but some people Allah guide them to practice more. Isn't it true? All right, and this is. We, we can't understand or we can't explain. This is up to Allah to guide whomever He wills. Isn't it true? And your job and my job is just to remind each other about the truth. Correct? All right? But this enjoying good for being evil, is it important? Yeah. Yes. Is it important? Isn't it true? Why is it important? Which run the Quran did Allah say? Five. Ethical. Kilburn Moss, a representative. <laughs> Where is it? First of all, it's surah number three, verse number one zero four, right? Wal takum minkum umatu yadauna ilal khair, wa yamuruna bil ma'roof, wa yanhauna an munkar, wa ulaika humul muflihun. And let there be among you a group of people inviting to all that is good, enjoying what is right, forbidding what is evil, and it is they who are the successful ones. Surah number three, verse number one zero four, right? Three verse one one zero. Allah. Um, Elevate our status. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijas dinas. You are the best nations that ever raised up for mankind. Why? Tak muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhaun alamun karwatuk minna malikna billah. Yeah, which means you enjoy good, you forbid evil, and you believe in Allah. So, it's very important that we remind each other. But again, eventually, brothers, the final guidance is from Allah. Isn't it true? Yes. So, in a sense that there's no point to you know, we feel, feel very sad and because this person is not practicing, it's up to Allah. Are we have given a free will to practice, Bilal? Yes, yes. Of course. Yes, yes. Isn't it true? How do you explain, right, um, about one, somebody whom I know, right? He, he, he was with Umrah, with, went to Umrah with me. And then he had all this, well, he, he suffered from some intestinal problems um, a few months ago and he wanted to kill himself wanted to kill himself i mean my job is just to remind him to be grateful that he's a muslim is it true people underneath the ground and people who has no chance at all we know in many verses of the Quran, what did they say? They want Allah to bring them back to this world, isn't it true? Yes. In order to worship Allah more. Oh, yeah. And then you are still alive, you are still breathing, right? He travels so far, he's, he's in the mosque, right? And yet, how can you take Allah's duty of taking your own life? In which, if you were to do that, anyone was to do that, what happened on the day of judgment? Hellfire. Hellfire forever, and not only that, you will be in that state of your suicidal attempts forever. So if you are jumping from the building and die, forever you'll be jumping off from the building. Yes. Forever. Forever. And forever is a word that you and I can see in all these fairy tale movies, in your, uh, what? In your, all your things that you read about, live happily ever after, right? Sleeping Beauty, right? Um, what else? Cinderella, is it true? All these new movies, happily ever after, is it true? Forever. But something in which if you were to experience forever is, is very harsh. How can you explain the best position in Hellfire is to stand on a stove and your, and your brains will boil forever? 
And this is something, it is best position. No? There's no other better position than that. And something which we do need to realize that, alhamdulillah, we are still alive, isn't it true? We are still able to worship Allah. We are still able to ask Allah for his forgiveness. We are still able to put our face on the ground, right? And inshallah, we will, with Allah's will, allow us to meet the month of Ramadan. Yeah? And this is something which is must be truly looking forward to in terms of our commitment to um, our um, uh, submission to Allah, right? Brothers, not everybody is selected by Allah or chosen by Allah to be Muslim, isn't it true? Not everybody. I'm sure, Elmi, you have your friends who are in school and who are not practicing. Your own people in your own country, as you say, right? Many of them are not practicing, right? Right, Sabah? Right? And, and this is how it is. That, alhamdulillah, we are in the mosque. Who guides us? Allah. Right? We could have been somewhere else. Right? After that, we could have been in Soho, is it true? <laughs> Somebody could be in any other places that you wish that you were with. But Allah has guided all of us to be here. And this is a big blessing that we are in the mosque. As we said so many times, we are like in a bubble, isn't it true? Yeah. Once you come out of the gate, it's very different. Right? So, Oh. See, I told you right. When I, if I were to start, people will come. Isn't it true? <laughs> okay, so this is very important that that today's topic is about we 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 are discussing about du'a, right? What are the common mistakes that people are committing when they make du'a? First of all, let us discuss when do you make du'a usually. But when at which at which part of your life, Nile? Which part of life? Yes. When bad things happen. Yes, and that is that is exactly the first point I was trying to make, right? Because all of us are making the oh when facing exams, right? You're so serious, right? Your salah so khushu, right? When Allah make you pass the exams, you're completely different in general, isn't it true? Right? As a human, right? And you are making du'a when you are facing these great difficulties, right? Something happens in your family, you have no money, you cannot find jobs. You make du'a to Allah very seriously. What about the times when you are at ease and there's no problems? Should we still make du'a to Allah? Precisely. This is very important. Yes, Almi? Does this show hypocrisy? Like, is this because I've seen that you mentioned exams, it's true because yeah. before exams, you like, Three weeks before you're very yeah, like the hajjud every ready. day, isn't it? <laughs> the hajjud, salah in the mosque. Right. And after things are easy, and you're last within yourself, like. And especially really. when Allah gives you A A A in your results, isn't it true? Triple A's, right? Completely, you're very you're very different. Agree? So it's a sign of hypocrisy. No, I agree. I don't get A A. I'm going to give you A's in Jannah, right? Um, I I won't say in hypocrisy, but more towards the. Uh, what do you call it? Um, as a human being, no, yeah, you're just we are just very we call it. I use the word negligent, is it true? Negligent of being grateful to Allah, yeah. And this is how, uh, listen to this hadith, brothers, right? This is from Ibn Abbas. Who's Ibn Abbas? I think uncle, no? right? Yes, Ibn Abbas, uh, Abdullah Ibn Abbas, is it true, right? Um, and he was, um, very at such a young age, right? He was very so pious, so much in seeking knowledge that Prophet himself make a dua to him that Allah um, grant him knowledge, not just knowledge, but understanding of the din. Understanding of the din, brothers, and knowledge of the din is very different. Yeah. What's the difference? And you could understand the din, like even Christian and stuff, but uh, what's that one? No. Unless the, the understanding and knowledge of the deen. Anybody can, not, can know the deen, isn't it true? Yeah, yeah. But deep understanding yeah. is very different, yeah. right? Whether you pray because it's just, well, part of your cycle, right? Or you really pray because you want to be closer to Allah and you understand the meaning is very different. But right? he made this dua to Ibn Abbas, so right? Mean, mean, Sorry? One. Yes. Right, yeah. Yes. And some people can do two calls, Yes. Yeah. So... But but the most important thing that he made dua to him 
to this Ibn Abdullah Ibn Abbas uh, for Allah to uh, for for Allah to yes to to make him have a deep understanding of the Deen, and therefore he is big. I mean, he grew up, and he everybody was the, even the, the other Sahaba was trying to seek knowledge from him, right? So he he said this, right? He was be say he said this. Right? One day I was behind the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Riding in the same mount, and he said, "Oh, young man, I shall teach you some words of um, of advice. First of all, be mindful of Allah, and Allah will protect you. Be mindful of Allah, and you will find Him in front of you. Again, always remember, doesn't mean He's in front of us. Isn't it? Where's Allah now? Where is Allah? Yeah, so he's never in his creations. Yeah, yeah. He's never around us. Yeah. So when when you read the Christ Hadith, always remember this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if you ask, then ask Allah alone, and if you seek help, then seek help from Allah alone, and know that if the nation were to gather together to benefit you with anything, they would not benefit you except what with Allah had already prescribed for you. And if they were to gather together to harm you with anything, they would not harm you except with that Allah has already prescribed against you, the pens have been lifted and the pages have dried. Right? Another hadith, this is from Tarmidhi, right? Another hadith, be mindful of Allah and you will find him in front of you. Recognize and acknowledge Allah in terms of ease and prosperity. And he will remember you in terms of adversity. What was the reminder? If remember of him in terms of ease and happiness, Allah will remember us in terms of tests and trials. Okay? Um, and know that what has passed you by and you have failed to attain was not going to befall you and what he has befallen you was not going to pass by. And know that the victory comes with patience, relief, with affliction and hardship with ease. So that means technically what we have, what the common mistake is for, as you know yourself, you know yourself better than anybody else. That majority of people would only make dua to Allah when they are in difficulties or when they need Allah. Yes. But when they have complete money, right, they, ease, they forget everything about their struggles. And it's very important that we understand, right? Brothers, never be a victim. A lot of people play, play the big, what is the victim game? That means you're always, oh, poor thing, I'm this, this, this. Subhanallah, we have, we have Islam. Isn't it true? Like two face. We, but we have, we are, is, we have Islam. That's the biggest thing, right? The fact that some of us are tested more than others, it is because truly Allah wants us to improve ourselves on the deen. Isn't it true? Right? Who are the test, tested the most? The prophets, followed by those who are more more pious in the early days of Islam. How can we be in the same position as the Sahaba? Right? We can never be. Right, our test today, 2023, in London, you and me, will never be the same as what the Sahaba experienced. Agree? Yeah. They were tested the most because all of them the most. By right, if you if you think about logically, if they are on the Deen, that means they are so pious to Allah. You will think that Allah will always give them a good time, isn't it true? Easy life, a lot of money. No, they were they were tested the most. And all of us always say, we I wish I was in the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But my next question is, if you are really at the time, will we be a Muslim at the time? Not necessary, isn't it true? Because the test is so much. Some of us are prefer to be in a very comfortable life. Uh, some of us maybe even, 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 even as a hypocrites if we were to live at that time, right? So very important that we understand this uh, hadith in the sense that we must remember Allah in times of ease, right? That means our tahajjud must always be continuous in terms of ease. Isn't it true? Do you agree? Not only when you need Allah, okay, every time pray in the mosque, right? Wear the best attire, right? Khushu. Once you get everything, take out everything, pray, right? <laughs> and this is what a lot of people are doing, right? So this is a common mistake that people are doing, right? That they only remember Allah in terms of difficulties. Right. The next one, people are making du'a to du'a because the, the title today, the common mistakes in making du'a. People are only making du'a to Allah when it comes to big issues, exams, want to get married, right? 
right? When when you got one, you have a good good, good career, all right? You have to remember that when it comes to small small things, the Sahaba was asking Allah for anything, anything, all right? So we know, for example, they asked uh, was asking Allah for about a shoelace missing, right? Sorry. Salt yeah, the salt, the salt, uh, asking Allah to give them the salt because they, they were quite poor, right? The salt in the food, right? And this is the small, small things in which people, we, we never ask Allah, right? Um, in my own experience, subhanAllah, you, you don't realize this, like for example, I, I'm not asking you to give me after this, right? Sometimes when I teach the whole day, I feel very thirsty. Yeah. And this is, this is, this is, uh, sometimes when I, it, okay, for example, I remember sorry, when, I'm sorry. What? Thirsty. Thirsty. Thirsty, I'm on water. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. And immediately, people provide, alhamdulillah, right? Oh, well, I, you, I remembered when I was, or, sorry? You feel tired when you tired, what are you doing? Or just, uh, I, never, I never tired, alhamdulillah. I, I get you, but, right? yeah, but I say, Water, just your water. Yeah, I want water. Ah, it's provided so for me. Yes. And especially when I remember when I went I went Hajj, right? Um in Hajj there's a period called Arafah, right? Arafah is when you make a dua is a it, Hajj is Arafah, that means in on another Zulhijah, it is the most important time of Hajj. I remember um making dua to Allah, right? And I I feel very hungry, right? Don't know what, nobody ordered the food for me, right? I went to the camp. Everything is there. KFC, halal of course, right? Not HFA. <laughs> KFC, uh, rice, everything is there prepared. SubhanAllah, and this is this is the thing in which, right? I just a lot of, I just honestly, brother, in my heart said, Ya Allah, I'm very hungry. That's it. Everything's provided. So all I'm trying to say, don't don't just make your dua when Concerning big issues, I got no money, right? I got no jobs, right? I want to marry somebody. But even small, small issues, everything is about to rely on Allah. So you know, to, to be to trust that Allah will will be, will come, will provide for us when we ask with His will, of course, right? So this is important that we we truly understand that we need to ask Allah even in times of um, um, small, small things. Yeah. Now. The next thing that this is quite common this is a common mistake. Even this has been even before the rituals of making du'a, right? We never come to Allah first. Some of us think that Allah can never can never solve our problems. We run to so right. So uh, I, I'm very desperate. I go to see my doctors first. Right? Yeah. I'm, very, I'm very desperate. I go and see somebody else first. You think that Allah cannot solve our problems? Is it true? And this is one of the common mistakes. Allah can do anything, right? As we we talked before in one whole topic in this class, right? In Surah number 12, verse number 21. Wallahu ghalibun ala amri. What does it mean? Allah has the full power and control over all his affairs. Walakinna akthara nasi la ya'lamun. But most men can do not know about this. Allah has, Allah has done everything. He can do everything for us. No matter how big our problem is, nothing is impossible for Allah to to resolve our, our issues. And it's very important to understand this, right? For some of us have this so little trust in Allah, right? That when Allah especially do not grant us some things, we think that Allah do not love us. Therefore, some people start to abandon their salah. Agree? Right? But you and I know what, when we make dua, what are the three things that can happen? So, so, yeah. Sorry? So, yeah. First of all, yes, of course, the, the, the dua is accepted, yeah. but perhaps not immediately. At the time in which Allah only knows that according to what Allah wills, not according to what we want. So it's accepted. Secondly, if it's not accepted, it's in Jannah. So none of our dua will be wasted. Thirdly, no, it's, it's something, no? Bad. Yeah, something bad is prevented from happening instead of this. This is in the hadith, right? So always always remember this, that, that things, sometimes we think that, oh, I want to get rich, I want to get money, I want to buy this house, I want to buy this car. Is it true? But, but you and I know, right? When you get this car, what happens to you? We get nice car, beloved. You get just straight, remember the yes. way they were going to do. 
that right. you you be approached by a few girls, right? Going to your car, and then you got these uh, being seduced by all this. Right. It's quite common, is it true? Yes, yeah, true. In in general, girls go for people like this, isn't it true? Do you agree? No, no. You must agree, right? <laughs> okay. I'm asking, looking at your face. <laughs> it is, right? Now, do you agree? In general, of course. Right? Sorry? I agree, I agree. No, you don't have to agree with me. I mean. <laughs> it's up to you. But all you can see from all these movies, from all these things, right? People are attracted to people, uh, men with money and cars and all this. Isn't it true? Right? And perhaps if Allah were to give you, what happened? Yeah, you, you, you may forget Allah, isn't it true? Again, and, and what Allah said in, in Surah number, um, I think look quickly, 42, right? In verse number 27, right? 42 in verse number 27. Yeah. Allah informed us, وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِهِ لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ يُنَزِّلُ بِقَدَرٍ مَا يَشَاء إِنَّهُ بِعِبَادِهِ خَبِرٌ بَصِيرٌ And if Allah were to enlarge the provision for his slaves, they would surely rebel in the earth. But he sends down by measure as he wills, verily he is in respect of his slaves, well aware they all see of all things that benefit them. So what does it mean? What is verse? Sometimes the things you ask is not. So that means if Allah were to give us everything that we ask, what happened? We will not obey Allah, isn't it true? We will rebel. What are the stories that we read in the Quran? Which, which, which people? Nation of Allah. Sorry? Uh, nation of Allah. Who are Islam's people? They were given more wealth, more power than Yes, them. I think more to Ad and Hud is more about um, well, the strength, isn't it? Strength and the ability to carve things from the uh, mountains. Talk right? about not just that, but yeah. not only were they given strength in the land, they were given wealth and dominion over other people. Yes. And also the land. So they yes. were given yeah. the most supreme human existence. Yes. Country. Right? Um. Good. And then other other nations, other people? Bani Israel. Israel, some, all right? The people of Harun, remember? In which the, if they, they, it requires several people to carry, carry yes, his keys to the wealth. Not the treasure, that's the keys, right? Um, we talked about the people in the land called Saba, right? In Surah 34, not Saba, Saba, right? Um, in which they were given everything, right? If you read the narrations of the Tafsir, it's a very amazing place in which what do people do in those days? They would have all these amazing trees and amazing fruits. Right? All they do is that they just put a basket there and they'll go through the thing and want to come up from the bushes, everything be full. The food is all there. So that means this is all these gardens of fruits, right? Yeah. With all the amazing fruits on the trees. They just put a basket there, just go and walk, come out, everything full. No need to pick, pick, or climb the trees, everything is full, okay. right? But again, they disobeyed Allah. What what happened to them? This is a very interesting story. What did Allah Among plan for them? Poverty. Almost there, but how did they become from poverty? Sorry? How? <coughs> Sorry, I'm a, I'm a lawyer, I need to ask <laughs> precisely how. <laughs> how? <laughs> there, is, there is a dam. Dam, yeah, there's a dam, right? The mice, mouse, eat all these wooden things in the dam, right? Because they were ungrateful to Allah. And again, flooding. And they say, oh, don't worry, right? This food will be grown again, like normal. Once the flood receded, the fruits are completely inedible. And this is, this is from Allah, right? When Allah gave us many things, a lot of people in general, they are ungrateful to Allah. Isn't it true? Right? So never, never think wealth is always a blessing. It can also be a punishment, right? In many verses of the Quran. So, for example, in Surah number 9, verse number 85, right? I just I hope this is the right verse, inshallah. So 9.85, Allah is reminding us, right? Um, in the meaning, and let not their wealth or their children amaze you. Allah's plan is to punish them with these things in this world, and that their souls shall depart or die while they are disbelievers. 
So don't be amazed if you are walking around Nice Bridge. People are zoom, 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 zoom. All the cars in it, right? And your heart, oh, I wish I got the kind of, the kind of car, right? Right, Akram? Some people like that have this kind of thing, but again, it is what Allah is saying, right? Allah's plan was to punish them. And this is how, even if you read the stories about Karun, isn't it true? Many people in, in, in that verses following that, they said, oh, well, we wish we had Karun's wealth. We wish we were in his position. When what happened to Karun? Swallowed by the by the earth, isn't it true? And and this is how it is. So don't ever envy people's wealth in which Allah would decree to whomever Allah's will. And even then, people's wealth will not or may not lead them to Jannah, isn't it true? It's more towards punishing people because mm -hmm. in many verses of the Quran, those who are rich will always be ungrateful to Allah. Mm -hmm. You and I know, brothers, that the majority people of the Jannah are the poor or the rich? Mm -hmm. The poor people in paradise, the majority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And even we know from a hadith that if, if two people will have the same deeds, same deeds exactly, but one is richer one, than the other one, the rich one will enter paradise how many years later? 40 years later. 40 years. Most of you are not even 40. So it's a long time. But as I said before many times, how, how long is the day of judgment? 50,000 50, years. And you, when you travel far distance, what is the thing that you want to do at the airport? Just rest and go home, isn't it true? So when after 50,000 years, what we want to do is immediately at the Jannah, inshallah, isn't it true? Not to wait for another 40 years for accountability. It's a long time, right? So this is something in which we do need to understand, right? About um, not to be making dua that perhaps, perhaps the dua that Allah will grant us in terms of wealth may lead us far away from Allah's mouth. Allah knows exactly what to give us, isn't it true? When we say Rabbana atina fit dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adaban nar we surah this now you're going to umrah inshallah is it true you're going to umrah is it true we surah this so al-baqarah verse number yusuf 201 right when we say what does it mean? What does it mean? Right? Rabbana atna fituna hasana. Our Rob grant us what is good in this life. Goodness is different from different people, isn't it true? Does it mean goodness means well, plenty of children? Always remember, right? You, uh, you, most of you are going to be the fathers of your future children, right? Are there a lot of responsibilities? Yes. yes. Most people they don't realize these responsibilities, right? They just dump the children in school, right? In the madrasa. At home, you completely com ignore about the salah in congregations, never encourage them about the deen. All you care about is to give the children tuition fees, right? Uh, give them the tutors for science, mathematics, and all this. But the deen completely you ignore, right? You will be responsible and answerable to Allah on the day of judgment. Is it true? Because your children are the trustees. These are the future, inshallah. Uh, continuation of our deen. Agreed? If you do not encourage them about the deen, how do you expect the people to be all the, all the Islam? That, uh, the religion of Allah doesn't need any one of us. You know? Allah doesn't need us, as you say, right? Because very, very important, we have this notion that we are so important, right? Without us, Islam won't continue. Who said this? Right? Allah will replace you and me, especially those who are brought up as Muslim people who are more Loving to Allah, like the reverse, right? Sofyan, right? Uh, Bilal, CJ, right? So these are the people who, whom Allah has replaced some people. I also, have, I also know people who love this deen of Islam, right? But Allah doesn't need any one of us. We need him completely, okay? So, in general, what is, du what is dua? 
What? What? How, how you define dua? Supplication. How do you define supplication? Worship. I know, but what? What exactly in simple words? Awesome. Yeah. So it, it is what you ask from Allah, isn't it true? In in anything, this is called dua, right? Supplications, as Allah said in Surah number, uh, sorry, in Hadith, right? Allah said in Abu Dawud, yet. Yeah. Um, al ibadah. Qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum. Yeah. Dua is worship. Your Lord said, call on me and I will answer you. Yeah. No, this is a hadith, right? Uh, Abu Dawud, graded Sahih Bal, Imam Albani, of course, right? So, um, it's authentic, inshallah. Yeah. So, we are ordered also to, to make dua to Allah directly. And this is where some is, is very odd, isn't it? In our, our salah, we, we say, Iya kana budu wa iya kana stain. What does it mean? <laughs> Only to you we worship. Yes. Only to you we ask for help. Yes. And yet you can see people going to the graves, right? I've seen many things, right? In Palestine, in, sorry, Egypt, right? Um, in Turkey, right? All these cultural practices, right? They go to the graves in order to ask for things, right? Or they have this, um, what do you call it? Um, shrines, shrines of the prophets. See, I seen in Palestine, in Jordan, right? They throw stones on it, right? They have some stones. Sorry, last night I was in the tomb. I was just doing it. Sorry? Uh, let me explain to you two seconds. Yes. I, I meet two guys from Albania. I, I usually I go to India. I, I go yes. to India. Two times, three times, and I went to It's 29, 20 years old. So I'm a little bit different with this guy. But yeah. They explain about uh, the believers. And I say I'm Muslim. So they hit straight away. I know. It's an that information. <laughs> and they say to me, they talk. And I just like hear them. I meet last night, first time, and I, I say, what do you believe? I say, I ask them, what do you believe, you guys? What do you believe? And I know the place in Albania. In some stones, you know? Stones like, uh, what's the next thing? Black stones. And uh, some people, they die in the grave. I say, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so don't really believe anywhere. That is sure, as you know, right? So, again, this is very, very important, right? That, well, at the end of the day, we just need to make dua for them and, of course, to advise them against this. Yet, um, But if they have read the Quran, right, brothers, if they read the Quran, right, Allah informed us Surah number 40, verse number 60, 40, 60, yeah. And your Lord said, <coughs> invoke me and I will respond to your invocations verily those who scorn my worship that means, that means do not invoke me they will surely enter hell in humiliation right so this is very important again I have seen myself um. <coughs> France it let's talk about Albanian I didn't say it he said what Albanian <laughs> right um what was that? Yeah, about about going to these countries in which are so the cradle of civilizations, right? In Palestine and all this, right? Um, how in Jordan, yeah, how they even throw coins to the shrines, throw coins, just like you see in the people throwing coins in the fountains in Rome, is it true? Right? And I said, oh, no, this is this is this is unbelievable how much people have change in many countries and then sorry to say that like Bangladesh is really true right always about Bangladesh but I'm sure other countries are similar right about how people are having shrines in the different villages right they refuse to pray to Allah directly but they they pay all this money to build the shrines and all this and this is happens in many many countries many countries okay sure yes of course right so and this is important because if you read the Quran you know that you won't do something like this. If you had guidance from Allah, you know you won't do something like this, right? 
Now Allah says in surah number 2 verse 186 wa idza sa'alaka 'ibadi 'anni fa inni qarib ujibu da'wata da'i idza da'an fal yastajibu li wal yu'minu bi la'allahum yarshudun and when my slaves ask you concerning me tell them or answer to them i am indeed near again you be careful when you read this translation near doesn't mean physical distance right near means what is nearness of allah means what This is knowledge. What are Allah's names in relation to knowledge? The names of Allah? Al-Alim. 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 And Al-Khabir. Correct? Means all aware. Or uh, As-Sami' The all-hearer. Al-Basir. The all-seer. Right? All these names that we must understand about Allah. Yeah? Um, yes. So, we we do need to look at ourselves right and ask ourselves about the dua that we, we we have been making right when allah do not answer our dua do we feel depressed should you feel depressed yeah. no right again as you said you, we should ask again of course <laughs> that brothers there are reasons why allah may not answer our dua is it true yes. right and only allah knows we discuss many times right so do not be, feel despair perhaps the thing that you ask for may lead you more towards um, inability to be obedient to allah yes. right and and this is something which we did we discussed just now every dua that we make is always a win-win situation either it's answered by allah immediately or sometime later or if something bad is avoided or your dua will be rewarded in jannah right for sure there is not ever to be wasted okay now um what other things that we so we talked about in summary right let's let's summarize for people who are late right what are the common mistakes that's not we make about dua the first one talk over the list yes what were the mistakes that we discussed mistakes that people made only in yes only in hardship you make dua in ease you forget about allah Second one? You don't say the you, no, you came there, you do not know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Second one is that you only make dua for big, big things, not for small, small things. You make dua for anything, isn't it true? Thirdly, that Allah can answer, can do anything. He has the power to do everything. Right, so do not doubt Allah's and Shaitan always asks us, us, you and me to doubt Allah. Isn't it true? Whether he can answer our dua or not. Allah can do anything, yes, Bila. That's why when sometimes people ask for certain things, ask Allah for certain things, they don't get it because they ask for the doubt. Yes. So you must ask like a sure say Allah go ask. Exactly. We're gonna talk later. What is the Arabic word? Yaqeen. Yaqeen means certainty. That is why never, never say, brothers, in your dua, oh, may Allah uh, grant you a pious child, inshallah. Never say inshallah, right? So that's why, brothers, when you have make a dua in your, whether in your Facebook, don't, don't say, um, may Allah do this, 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 and you say inshallah. So by, by saying inshallah, that means you are not certain that Allah is going to answer dua. Is it true? Yaqeen. Yeah, certainty. Sorry, questions? I'm going to say, how can we... Because um, I think that's what the problem is with making dua to most people is they're clean. How can we? Um, does that come with high iman or does that come with knowledge? Because sometimes you have the knowledge. I think a, a few like, things with, with guidance from Allah, with knowledge. But the, again, okay, when when we talk about this, right? What do you understand about the Surah number twelve, verse twenty-one? I just said just now. Wallahu ghalibun ala amri. Allah has a full power and control of all his affairs. What does what does it mean? Control he, he he controls everything. Isn't it true? Everything that we understand or we we think that is impossible, Allah can control everything. Isn't it true? When you know about this verse, doesn't it shouldn't it in, increase your ability to have this certainty uh, about Allah, right? And Allah's names. Al Mujib. What what does Al Mujib means? You are inventing things, isn't it? It's not. <laughs> Al Mujib, the one who can answer your du'a, isn't it? Al Mujib, correct? The one who can answer you, your invocations. Al Mujib. 
so, right? So in the sense that we, we by knowing the names of Allah, by knowing who Allah is, by knowing Tawheed, again, we discussed many times, brothers, about Rab, right? What is What does Rab means again? Creating, create, 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 creator. I think I'm thinking of you now, but your gym. <laughs> Creating, create, creator, sustainer, maintainer, the one who protects. It is all from our Rob, isn't it true? When you, that's why I always say, if we understand Tawheed, we shouldn't doubt Allah, isn't it true? Do you agree? It solves everything about our issues that we face. There's, there's nothing at all that we don't understand. We understand Tawheed, right? Tawheed Arububia, especially. So, yeah? Yes. So, uh, so in a sense, right? We know, for example, in a, in the battle, not in battle, in the time of the Surah Al Fil. What happened in Surah Al Fil? The armies from Yemen. Yeah. And come and destroy the Kaaba. Yes, and and then they meet throughout the Allah alone. <coughs> Allah sent the birds and the stones. Yes, so them on the elephants and the armor. Yes. So in that process, we talked about it in this a few times in this class. What is the name of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uh, grandfather? Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib, right? The the king confiscated hundred of his camels. Right, hundred camels. Camels are very expensive in those days, right? especially now, right? Very expensive, right? So hundred camels was was confiscated, and he immediately marched to the office, to the office, to the to the palace of the <laughs> of the uh, uh, king, right, and said, "Give me back my camels." And the king said, "I'm so disappointed in you. I'm here. Here am I trying to attack and claim your car, but you are just asking me for your camels." And he said in his amazing uh, speech, right, in the meaning, he said, the camels belong to me. I'm the owner. I'm asking for you back. The Kaaba belongs to Allah. He will protect it. Did Allah need anybody of the Quran to protect the Kaaba? No. As you said, he just sent these birds, isn't it true? With these stones. And once the stones touch the, the enemies of the, the soldiers, they, they melt immediately. Right? And it's quite important to understand what this rob means. Right. So to ask to answer your question, um, Elmi, right, in order to make us have this yaqeen that Allah is there and all this, understanding Tawheed is very important. Right. And understanding the verse of the Quran. When I say understanding, I'm, I don't just say read, right? <coughs> read and understand and ponder is very different and implement, right? What is the whole word called we discussed before in Arabic? To recite properly, to understand. No, Furqan is to a uh, criterion. What is it? Not Tartir, that is to recite properly, right? Tadabur, is it true? Tadabur means covers everything, right? That's why even for me, myself, in my, in my tahajjud, when I do my, my, my procession, I ask, ask Allah, Ya Allah, allow me to have the tadabur of the Quran, right? To implement it. What do you mean tadabur? Like understanding the Quran? No, tadabur covers everything. To recite the Quran properly, right? To have this understanding, to be able to, impl uh, to, the, to ponder over the verses with the correct understanding, right? And to implement, because when, when we talked about some verses of the Quran, some people have this confusion, isn't it true, right? So let's say, right? In Surah Nasr, Allah said in the meaning, right? Do not approach the prayer in your intoxicated state. What is your understanding of this verse? Allah didn't say do not drink alcohol. No? Allah, Allah just said do not approach the prayer in intoxicated state. What does it mean? But, but I can drink, isn't it true? Mm. Yeah. But I can drink, isn't it true? But, but when you pray, stop drinking. Yes. Do you agree? But that is the understanding of people who are completely no tadabur of the Quran, isn't it true? Because if you reread further in Surah number 5, verse 190, and 5, verse 1991, it's complete prohibition of alcohol. Right? Oh, yeah, so it's completely uh, prohibition of alcohol. Right? So this is, this is what tadabur means, right? We just pick and choose what you want to do, and we call it, we call it understanding the Quran. No, it's not, right? You must take the Quran as a whole in order to be able to fully implement what Allah informed us in the Qur'an. Yeah? So, now, the first thing, the, the, the next common mistake that we, we need to understand is that, as I said just now, 
people fail to understand about how Allah will respond to our dua. Right? People think, oh, Allah doesn't love me. Right? And this is when, um, again, seeing these people, sometimes when I see my clients and all this, when I see the reactions, it does make me, alhamdulillah, use it as an example about how people react to Allah. So this, this woman from Iran, uh, Iran was saying something like, oh, I, I, I try to I tried to ask Allah, but he didn't help me. What was my next question? Do you pray? No. You're not even praying. You expect, I'm not judging, of course, right? And you expect Allah to help you. And this is, this is, this is beyond belief, right? And as I said just now about this, this person who wanted to commit suicide, right? Um, again, right? <coughs> I asked, I always, you, are not, you, are, you, are not, you know me very well. I was very, very frank or very forward to my students, right? In a nice way, of course, not judging, right? I asked him again, same question. Are you praying five times a day? He said, no. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you want Allah to alleviate you of your difficulties, and yet you're not fulfilling your duties to Allah. Right? And this is very important for us to realize when we make dua, in the sense that we did, do need to fulfill our, the, the, the bargain, in the sense that you worship Allah, then Allah will answer your dua. Isn't it true? In general, inshallah. Right? You cannot not fulfill your part of the deal, and you expect Allah to uh, answer your dua, and if Allah did not answer your dua, then you feel very disappointed and very depressed, and shaitan going to you again and all this, and, and cause you to be, you know, you know uh, becomes far away from Allah. Yeah? Sorry, uh, your questions? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was uh, thinking, yeah, so how do you understand you know, something uh, uh, like you 50 50, like you only decide something? I know this is a dua, it's a sukara. Yes. Right. And you know, I'm here again, so it's just like, well, I've done uh, so many times something I haven't seen, you know, something maybe 100% for me or 50 50. Yeah. And, uh, you do, you pray the istikhar at night time, and the argument, you judge yourself, you say, oh, why it's not happened? What does it mean, like, more information, more knowledge, more, like, your advice? Oh, no, the, so you're, you're asking the question that if you do istikhara, you don't yeah, see any signs. So many brothers, they say, oh, my brother, oh, do this, do this, because it's going to completely, they're going to decide in your... Giving you the, the counsel, yes. not for you. Yes. So, yeah. I'm talking about, let's say, maybe one house. I don't want to say provide because, inshallah, I will get a wife or something. But so, <laughs> something like in dunya. Yeah, so so first of all, I would advise you whether you understand what you say in your istikhara. The dua. Do you understand what you say? The dua itself? Uh, yes, it's a special dua. Like, uh, How do you do istikhara? I'm not judging your course, I'm just asking you, right? How do you do istikhara? This is a good question. What is, what is, so, so before that, what is Iskara? Asking Allah's counsel. Yeah. Asking Allah's counsel, right? In any decision, whether you want to go yes. to work here or go to school overseas yeah, or you want to get married, whatever it is, right? So, how did you Iskara? You mean how you pray night time? Okay, doesn't matter what which 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 time. How what is the procedure? Sorry. What what do you do? Two raka? Two And after that? Uh, Too soon, yes, after that. And you make dua, what dua do you make? This for me, yes, do it if you hire for me and for my religion and for my yes, everything in yeah. the future, yes, and for what I'm doing, yes, someone's making it to happen, yes. If, if, if it's not, so, yes, so you say, please, Allah, if, you, if it is not for me, move me away, yes, and, uh, true. Make right. it don't happen. Yes. Okay. So how after you make your dua? Okay. Before that, in that decision, for example, let's say let's say you want to marry this sister, right? Let's say, right? <laughs> it is <laughs> very happy, right? But but it it is it is important that you do not make any decision yet, right? Some people I know are so determined to make things happen, right? Yes. That, so much. 
too much. That means that, that means they, they do not actually keep the heart empty for Allah's signs. Right? So in that in that way, Allah's signs may be very subtle, may be very small, that you are clouded from seeing the signs. That may be one of the reasons, right? But if your heart is completely clean, no matter it is positive or negative, you usually you you would see the signs. Are they in a dream or in the events that leading things happen? Yes. Yes, you can see in the dreams. But provided that your what uh, in your heart you keep it clean and the sense you do not you do not have decided what you want to do. For this is yes, of course. You don't know the, the, the dreams can be from shaitan, can be from this. Yeah. But when so let's say right, I I didn't do istikhara, right? But I remember. Um, this person was telling about his his istikhara, right? He had a dream about this girl. In the real life, this girl was wearing hijab, right? But in this dream, this girl wasn't wearing hijab. Was with a dog. So there is a. It's not coincidence. Isn't it true? It's a sign from Allah, right? So so these are the things we can talk about next time, inshallah, right? About this, inshallah, right? Sorry, look, sorry. How, how do you differentiate whether it's a shaitan? No, 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 this is usually. Yeah, because we are sincere, Allah will make it known to you. Sorry, no? No, I was just going to say for as well. I see a lot of brothers, they seek istikhara, but they don't do the five daily in the nice Yes. So you can seek Allah's counsel, but don't expect Allah to respond to you if you don't really respond to him five times a day. You have to be praying five times a day, seek istikhara. Because when I, before I got married, I did istikhara as well. You can seek it through dreams, maybe something good happens to you in your life, that a job, something cool, you feel better, you feel more in touch with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's another good sign as well. Or the increase to talk one in your mind as well. Yeah. Mm, yes. Well, okay. Yes, well, Alright, so questions? So contrary to what you've said, I've always been told that this Sahara is let's say for example, I'm making a decision, I want to do this investment. Yes. I I make my intention, I'm gonna make an investment, I keep I proceed towards it. And I face the hardest continuously. And then if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Except that as the, as the consequence. Yeah. Um, is that the same or do, do no. no? Yeah. So actually, the Sahara, because you are asking Allah's counsel, isn't it true? Mm-hmm. Whether it's good for you. But because if you have already invested or started the whole thing, that was the point of Sahara. Mm-hmm. Right? But you should have done it before it, then Allah will give you a sign whether it's easy or not. Because some people whom I know, right? That again, particularly getting married is the most common thing, right? Uh, so, in the sense that the parent in law, uh, the, 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 the daughter, uh, the, the parents of the girls are very against it all the time. This is a sign from Allah, for sure. You cannot cling on to what you're doing uh, just because you're, you have this sure intention to go marry this person, then the signs of Allah you ignore completely, right? So, this is, you have, must be very careful about this ikhara, right? So, let's move on quickly because of the time, yeah? Um, the next common mistakes, of course, as Luan pointed out to you, right? What is your relationship with Allah? You know yourselves, isn't it true? I cannot judge you or uh, wearing a thobe, wearing a this, um, best relationship with Allah. It's not like that, right? You know yourself, whether you are obedient to Allah, what, whether you are cheating, lying. Are there a lot of people wearing thobes and a uh, hat that are cheating and lying? Yes. Are taking corruptions? Yeah. Yes, of course. Right? Too many, isn't it true? And this is something in which you need to analyze yourself. If if you think the relationship is far away, right? How can Allah answer your dua? Right? And so you need to analyze yourself. What is the relationship with Allah? Yeah? Um, am I cons- cons- con- uh, continuously asking for Allah's forgiveness? Right? Um, have I been reading Quran consistently? Trying to analyze whatever I read and trying to have this tada in the Quran, right? Um, have I been trying to follow the ways of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? In terms of my deen, all this we need to analyze ourselves. <coughs> yeah. Um, so, brothers, you, only you can deceive yourselves by thinking that you are so close to Allah, yeah, but completely you have no knowledge about Tawheed, right? So this is something that you do need to um, understand, yeah. About, um, for example, right? If I want to be, if I want Allah to love me, what must I, what must I do first? Yes, 
Good, but obligatory, obligatory deeds first, isn't it true? Yeah. Pray, fasting, Ramadan. Then the hadith is very clear, right? Allah will love you. If you want Allah to love you even more, what must we do? Yes. Then to do our voluntary deeds. Right? The sunnah prayer, sunnah fast. Are we fasting on Mondays and Thursdays? No, no. I'm asking for Mondays and Thursdays. Alhamdulillah, some of us are fasting. Are we doing that? Yeah, we should do it. Is it? Is it? I, I, are we going to die with not by not eating and drinking for twelve hours? Inshallah, are we going to die? No, is it true? I protect myself first. Sorry. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. No, not only that, right? Because this is part of the Sunnah deeds, isn't it true? How can brothers, brothers, how can you not fast voluntarily when the rewards of fasting is tremendous? What are the five rewards of fasting again? I confuse this wudu, is it true? Right? First of all, fasting, the reward is only with Allah. Isn't it true? Only Allah can or will reward us, inshallah, accordingly. Secondly, when the deeds are counted, when the deeds are put forth, no, no, that, that is the, but in fasting in general, what other things? The doors? Or paradise, ah, how many? Eight. Eight. One of them is called Arayan. Oh, yeah. And those who are fasting can enter from this called Arayan. Number three? The reward of the Lord. The reward of fasting. Oh. Every day of fasting oh, will lead oh, us to be oh. away from hellfire for how many years? Oh, 70 oh. years. It's a long, it's a long, long period. Yeah. Thirdly, fourthly, fasting will be. In, have an intercession on the day of judgment. Intercede means, brothers, trust me, right? Most of us will not fall under the 70,000 people who enter Jannah directly. Isn't it true? Because the sins that we have done somehow or other have not been forgiven. So most of us will scramble to different prophets in a long hadith. Eventually we will scramble, we will, we will rush to Prophet Muhammad to ask for his intercession. And fasting is one of those who will intercede for us, isn't it true? Saying this person was hungry and thirsty because of me, let me intercede for him. So you see how we, uh, you said that we're going to be going to each prophet? Yes. Because are we going to remember anything? In, because in this dunya, for example, we know yes. what's going to happen there. Yes. In the year after, we will forget and we will do this kind of thing, we go to each prophet. Most of us, yes. Okay. Yeah, we will go to, most of us, we go to different prophets, isn't it true? Only a selected few are not able or will enter Jannah directly right, without any of these tests. Yeah, we, we make do, of course, we are among one of them, isn't it true? Right? Uh, lastly, what is, uh, is the reward of fasting? Now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was asked a question. Tell me a deed which will lead me to paradise. What did he say? Stick to fasting. Tell me another deed. Stick to fasting. Tell me another deed. Stick to three times. Fasting. So why aren't we fasting on Mondays and Thursdays? Why? But you don't like it. Sorry? You don't like it. We don't you don't like to enter Jannah, is it? We don't like fasting. Right? Yes. So let's say reason you can only fast one of those two days. Yes. Are there rewards to Yeah, Alhamdulillah, yes of course. As best as you can, is it true? Yes now. Because of the gym dates. <laughs> Yeah, but what is this about the white days again? White days is the 13, 14, 15 of the Islamic calendar. Yeah, of every month. Of every month, yes. And what is special about those? I know we passed. Same, same. It's, it's, it's never, never left these white days. Oh, but it's partly right. because the people there, when the moon is full, apparently there's people are more angry and stuff. I don't know. Is that not? Werewolf. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about this. To protect yourself from the uh, bad things and the, your knowledge or your single, like for example, me or many. Yes, people. yes, of course, yes. So most of us are single here, isn't it? Be close. Yes, to you. remember your. To remember Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. Enjoy your singleness. <laughs> yeah, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Yeah. With your nerves. <laughs> oh yes, all the single tens here, yeah, subhanallah. <laughs> yeah, fast <laughs> please. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So so do 
Because brothers, I can guarantee you, right? Brothers, on the day of judgment, when all of us are scrambling for our deeds, looking for our deeds, you will remember this talk, inshallah. Why am I not fasting? Right? Mondays and Thursdays. It's very easy now, isn't it true? Even Fajr is, uh, Maghrib now is before five, right? Uh, inshallah, it's still very easy, inshallah, right? Um, now, the next one, the common mistakes is that people are failing to follow the etiquette of making dua. What is etiquette of making dua again? Etiquette. First of all, praise Allah. Then, send blessings to Prophet Muhammad. What do you say now? Yeah, Allah Muhammad wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad and all this, right? And then after that? And then you lost your forgiveness. Yes, bye. Well, the best dua is la ilaha illa anta subhanaka ibn kutubin Good, which surah is this? That is 2187. Yes. No, this is making dua. Etiquette. This, right? Um, and then after that? Then you call Allah by his name. Yes. Yes, right. So this etiquette. So people are failing to do this, especially when you don't send blessings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What is the result? The doors are closed. The door is suspended. Is it true? Right. So do do make sure that we understand this. Right. Good. Good. Young male. Not in box. <laughs> okay. Now. As, as, as Bilal said just now, right, about the yaqeen, certainty. When we make dua, we must have yaqeen. Allah is going to answer our dua. If we don't have this, that, that makes our dua less answerable by Allah. So you have to send salam to the Prophet. Yes, in this etiquette. Right? Because if you say anything else? Just simple, Allah wa sallam ala Nabi Muhammad, Allah sallam ala Muhammad, wa ala Muhammad, whatever it is you want to say. Okay? So this is part of the etiquette. After you finish. No, at the beginning, not the finish. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now being humble. Humble means. Because we are just a slave of Allah, isn't it true? Slave. Slave. We are completely nothing. All right. So so don't yeah, for instance, don't be arrogant that you expect Allah to answer our dua just because oh I'm wearing a thumb, I'm one from Albania, right? Like <laughs> right. Now, the next one is very important, and, and you will hear this, right, brothers, when you are uh, especially doing, doing Umrah and all this. You do not know what you are saying. Just repeat, repeat after the Imam, remember uh, Marwan, right? When we do Umrah together, right? Nobody knows what you are saying. You just repeat, I mean, I mean, I mean. Do not, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, right? Especially, brothers, in your Taraweeh prayer, right? You are lifting on your hands, right? And you just, in the Quran Dua, or even though Imam was saying, Ya Allah, Right in, in, in Islam, the most. Yeah, Allah, we have we have sinned and wronged ourselves, and you say, I mean, I mean, like you know, it's ridiculous, right? You have to be careful about what you're saying. You do and 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 say your dua, Inshallah. Like some people of the Arab speaking. Yes. That's why they say it. I mean, and we say I mean. But most of the dua is quite common, Inshallah. So you need to know the dua in 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 the language, right? Now, another thing is that now this is well. I mean, many more, they have a dua that is said in congre congregation of the salah. Isn't it true? Right? What is the ruling regarding this? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's all together combined, right? So it is an innovation, right? In the, time, in, in the early time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when um, he was teaching people a dua, yes, he was telling the people to say the dua, right, in together, but after that he stopped completely, right? Everybody should say the dua in your own language, you understand, right? That's very important, right? So, Prophet Muhammad says, so Allah said in the Quran, in Surah number 7, number 55, in the meaning, invoke your Lord with humility and in secret. There was an incident where the Sahaba was uh, with the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And they were riding with him, and then they were saying loudly, Allah Akbar, and all this. And he said, You are calling on your Lord that is not deaf. So you don't need to raise your voice to think that Allah will, will hear your dua. Okay, so again, Surah number 7, 55 said, In the meaning, invoke your Lord in humility and in secret. And the best dua is made in which time? For example, the last of the night, isn't it true? In which Imam Shafi said the dua of people in praying tahajjud will not miss as if 
the arrow hit the target is it true right so very important to to <coughs> is it is it is it to wake up for tahajud now very easy, yes. 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 what time is fajar now Six, about six, no, six thirteen. I mean, around there, six fifteen, around there, right? So you can you can wake up at about five forty five if you are just straight to rakaah and one witir, inshallah. It's, it's not difficult, inshallah. But of course, all this depends on Allah's invitation. Is it true? Do you agree? If Allah do not invite you to wake up, you will not wake up. I always say, brothers, that if Allah do not, if you miss your salah for whatever reasons, right? It is because Allah doesn't want to meet you. Do you agree? You are not invited by Allah. Do you agree? Yeah. Because for me, it's like, subhanAllah, when we are in the mosque, alhamdulillah, we should wear nice things, isn't it true? Right? Presentable, wear perfume, and have this real thinking that you are meeting Allah. You are in the mosque, alhamdulillah. Right? Whereas people are in Oxford Street now, shopping, right? Westfield, right? Watching football now on TV. But we are in the mosque, alhamdulillah. Again, through Allah's guidance, right? Very important that we take advantage of this, inshallah, right? Um, being hasty that your dua is wasn't answered. Hasty means rush, rush, and you think that your dua should be answered immediately, and you give up making dua, mm. right? So don't do this. Keep on making dua, inshallah. Allah yeah. will answer with His will. We was a prophet that made dua for forty years, I think, no? For two thousand years. 2000. Who's that? No, no, no. Ibrahim alayhi salam, what dua did he make? That Allah would send a prophet to lead us, isn't it true? In the, in the Kaaba, in the sense he was, he, he made dua to Allah Ibrahim alayhi salam, to send a prophet to teach us the deen. 2000 years. Yes, 2000 years. Okay. Isn't that long? <coughs> yes. He made dua to die in the Oh, except 2000 years. Oh, except. Okay. <laughs> Some, the, another common mistake is that people are not taking advantage of the best times to make dua. Brothers, the best days to make dua is not by the graveyard. You are going to the grave. My culture, right? You go to the grave, making dua, right? etc. Yasin, right? All these are not in authentic hadith. Okay? Um, so this is important that before we go, right? We're going to end today, inshallah, for this class, right? But quickly, what are the best places or times to make dua? In your sujood, in your prostration, right? Not after Salah. Right, Before Salah. Right? Between Adhan and Qamah. Jummah. Jummah when? When the Imam sits. The imam sits down, so, so you make dua that Imam sits down longer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, not if you're very, very fast. Yes. Yeah, just make, make dua. <laughs> Sorry? Between that time, Friday. I think in... The last hour. <laughs> no, after Asar, in the one hadith, uh, and, or one hour before Maghrib, yeah. on Fridays, right? What about when also when you're fasting as well? Fasting, yeah, and you're traveling, when fast. uh, especially when you break the fast. Brothers, when, when you break the fast, don't just stare at the food, right? Make dua, inshallah, right? Or don't watch, I don't know, or do Facebook and all this kind of thing. Make dua, inshallah. Right? Sorry, when it rains? When it rains, alhamdulillah. When the rooster crows, Right, in the hadith. Sorry? When you're oppressed? Oppressed? Yeah. By your wife? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, so take advantage, please, of the um, of the uh, hours of um, um, the best times to make dua, inshallah. Right? Uh, any other questions, brothers, before we end this talk? So there are, we, I've covered quite a lot today, right? In terms of the common basics that we people use to make dua. All right, so we do need to take down of what we discussed. Yeah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us with, with the ability to be guided at all times until our last breath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins and shortcomings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our family members who are not in the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers who are suffering in Palestine, in, in Iraq, in Syria, in many other places. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us the ability, ability to meet the month of Ramadan, to die in a state of Iman and Taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us uh, in a straight path until we meet him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Allah for the doubt. Subhanahu wa ta'ala shirala ala anta wa astaghfiruka wa adubu subhanahu wa ta'ala rabbil izzata ma yasifun wa aslam ala al-musallin wa hamdulillah ala alamin aslam ala kumrahu barakatuh jazakum wa khair. Visit each other next week, inshallah. Yeah?